I'm sure we're all familiar with the proverb, if you can't beat them, join them. It basically says that if you cannot win against much stronger opponents, then it is better not to fight against them, but rather join them on the same team. I sometimes wonder if this was the kind of sentiment that was passing through the minds of the people who lined the streets of Jerusalem on the first Palm Sunday to witness Jesus passing through the city riding on a donkey. The crowds that went ahead of him and the crowds that followed him were shouting at the top of their voices. Matthew 21 verse 9a. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David. The term Hosanna is a celebratory prayer for salvation. Psalm 118 and verse 25a, the word Hosanna is translated in our English Bibles as O Lord, save us. Psalm 118 was recited at the Passover meal in the temple and in the synagogue. It was an appropriate opportunity for the Jewish people to celebrate God's great deeds from the time of the Exodus right through to the time of the Messiah's coming. The congregations waved branches of myrtle, willow, and palm leaf. In later years, around the time of Jesus, this activity was a major feature of the pilgrimage to the temple of the Jews who had settled in foreign countries. It was sung as the pilgrims came up the hill to the temple to celebrate the goodness of God and offer gifts in thanksgiving. For their prosperity. This celebration, like the Passover, was a fitting way of remembering their salvation from slavery away back in the land of Egypt. Part of the ritual was like going camping. Men would sleep out and eat all their meals for seven days in roughly constructed shelters made of branches. During this time, except for the first day, which was a holiday, they continued their daily work. The ritual was repeated to remind the Jews that when they escaped from Egypt, they had to live for a time in rough shelters or in makeshift tents. The people brought branches to the temple to take part in the celebration. When Jesus came to Jerusalem at the time of the Passover, he was welcomed with the waving of branches and palm fronds. Those in the crowd who shouted and waved the branches must have had very high hopes that week which began when they shouted, Hosanna! Remember the translation? Lord, save us. This was an expression of the Messianic longing of the people. On the first Palm Sunday, Jesus was greeted by the people as the Savior, as the Messiah, who is a king has come to save the people, to deliver them, to set them free from captivity. It was their intention to join up forces with him. Jesus was specially anointed for the unique ministry of saving people from their distress and granting them salvation. As the people shouted, Hosanna! It was a desperate plea 
for their salvation. Lord, save us. Their shouts were both a greeting and a celebration in the expectation and hope that a Savior had finally come into their midst. Some of the people in the crowd, I suspect the majority, got the wrong end of the stick, as we would say. They thought Jesus was going to save them from their Roman oppressors. They saw Jesus as a political deliverer. They thought that Jesus had come to set them free not from the bondage of Egypt, but from the bondage of Roman oppression. But that was never the mission of Jesus. Remember his name and what it means? It means Savior. When the people shouted, Hosanna! It was an affirmation of belief in Jesus as the Savior. The mission of Jesus, as we well know, was to save people from their sins and grant them salvation. Not to deliver them from political oppression. Hosanna! Lord, save us. Today in our world, there are many people who are crying out, Hosanna. That might surprise you. You probably have never heard anybody say Hosanna. I don't think I have, apart, of course, from church, when people read the Bible and that kind of thing. So what on earth can I possibly mean when I say people are shouting Hosanna? They have no idea that this is what, in reality, they are saying. They would never use the word Hosanna in their everyday vocabulary. And they would barely recognize the word or know what it means. And yet, in a strange way, that is what they are saying. Or should I say, shouting. When they say something like this, save us, they really are shouting, Hosanna. Many people may not be crying out to the Lord to save them. But in their desperation, they want someone or something to save them from the stress of their extremely difficult circumstances. So what do they do? They look to political leaders. They even look to church leaders. And they look to social activists in order to save them. Sadly, many leaders in influential positions let them down. We might even say, let all of us down. Many people in our world want to be saved from the devastation of the earthquakes, tsunamis and floods that have destroyed their cities, towns and communities. We hear the desperate pleas from the lips of victims as they stand in the midst of the rubble. You've seen them many times on television. Do something to help us. Oh, please, please come and save us from this ruin. It really is. A dreadful sight 
And none of us enjoy hearing their pleas for help. Please save us. There's a sense in which they are really shouting, Hosanna. People want to be saved from environmental catastrophe brought about by human greed and from the threat of violence in their communities. The cry of so many people in our broken world these days is, Save us. Come and save us. We've all been deeply distressed as we've watched the news of those scenes over in Ukraine. Bomb after bomb in many of the cities and hospitals and other places where innocent people are gathering together. Those scenes are horrific. And again, we've heard these wonderful people from Ukraine utter words in their own language, which really mean, save us. Some of you, even gathered here in the Warriors Chapel this afternoon, may be crying out, Hosanna in this Holy Week. You're not actually using the word Hosanna, but what you're saying is, Save me, O Lord, I pray. I plead with you to save me from the dreadful circumstances of my life. The Lord can. And he will hear your plea. And he will answer your prayer. I wonder, is there someone here at this lunchtime service who wants to be saved from your sin and experience the joy of salvation? To be liberated from your past and be able to enter into that new life in Christ. You may be carrying a heavy burden of guilt that is weighing you down. That is making your life miserable. You want to be delivered. You want to be rescued and set free from the bondage of your sin? May your prayer this afternoon be, Hosanna! Save me, O Lord, I pray. The Lord Jesus, as the Savior, will hear your prayer. And he will save you from your sins today. He will set you free and he will give you the gift of his salvation. Hosanna, Lord, save us. Don't try to beat the power of your sin any longer. But instead, join up forces with Jesus, the conqueror, the Savior, and follow him. Amen.